Hi, my name is Jassy. Hello, my name is Jassy. Hi, my name is Jassy. <laughs> Hi, my name's Jassy. I'm a recipe writer at Abel & Cole, and today I'm going to be making drop scones. It is like three in the afternoon, and it is pitch black and raining a lot, and that feels like a really good moment to be making some drop scones. Feels like a good time to throw, throw some dye, throw some dye, fry some dough. This is going really well so far. So drop scones, uh, they are like American pancakes or Scotch pancakes. They're quite sort of short in texture and they're quite crispy on the outside with a dense middle. They're not as sort of light and fluffy as um, American pancakes or Scotch pancakes would be. My dad used to make them for breakfast for us when I was little and they were just so delicious and I thought I want to share drop scones with everybody because everyone has American pancakes now and I'm like, no, drop scones are better. So we've got 25 grams of butter. Uh, which we're just going to melt. <laughs> we're just going to we're just going to melt. Yep. <laughs> this is just to enrich the dough, so it's kind of like so it's not just flour that goes into this. There's lots of like nice luxury ingredients like butter and egg and sugar and raisins, which makes it kind of more of a treat. Um, so we'll melt the butter, let it cool. In the meantime, I've got some plain flour. Sieve. Yes, I have got a sieve. Hooray! 225 grams of plain flour. How high do I need to go for filming? <laughs> we've got two teaspoons of baking powder and we've got 25 grams of just uh, ordinary cast sugar. Put that all in. Yeah, butter's melted. Gonna let that cool. Right, so this is just all gonna whisk together. Um, just gonna do that first to make sure that the sugar and the baking powder is all kind of evenly distributed. Next, one egg, medium sized egg. This is really, you can really see me thinking to remember this. So just cracked it into the middle and I'm just going to use my whisk to sort of just quickly muddle it in the middle. So you can see it's it just kind of making a sort of slightly short mixture. And then the next thing to add is 180 ml of milk. I'm just going to add it a bit by bit. This really is a bit more like a scondo, but just slightly looser. It kind of, it should just drop off the spoon. This is just such a, a favourite. I was telling my family about how we were going to do some videos and I picked drop scones because, because I remember how Dad used to make them on the weekend and got very reminiscent about it and how we used to eat them. And I'd forgotten that we would eat them with golden syrup. Then everyone was just off checking their cupboards to see how much golden syrup they had. And my parents have three tins of golden syrup in the cupboard ready to go for any kind of drop scone emergency. Yeah, I'm going to add the last little bit. You kind of have to judge it. I don't know if Teo is going to drop some music over the top, but if you can hear the rain, then, you know, that's it's different atmospheric conditions affects all kind of baking things. Sometimes you need more flour, sometimes you need more liquid. Oh, that's, yep, that's got it. It's quite stiff. Without pouring the batter everywhere, that's what it should look like. I need to add the butter. <laughs> Nearly put the whisk in to the sink. So, into our batter we have the flour, the baking powder, the sugar, the butter, the egg, the milk. I'm just gonna add in uh, some raisins. It's 25 grams of raisins, so like a small handful. I'm just gonna stir that in with a spoon. And this is our batter ready to go. Uh, let's just pick this up. Perfect. For frying, I am going to use ghee. It's basically kind of like clarified butter. So you get that nice buttery flavour, but at a higher smoke point. Medium high heat. Don't want it to be too hot because, because it's quite thick. It needs a bit of time in the pan to cook all the way through. I feel like I have to yell over the rain. <laughs> Unlike pancake batter that you make for flat pancakes, you don't rest it because it's got the baking powder in it. As soon as the liquid hits the baking powder, it starts to activate, it starts to sort of create air bubbles and you want to get that into there so the heat can add more whoosh, <laughs> more whoosh. <laughs> nice big splodge of ghee. I've got a palette knife for turning them over. Like all of our spatulas are really big but I, and I was like, oh, the palette knife will be smaller. I'm not sure it is. There we go. So very slowly. Like roughly a spoonful is enough for one 
they won't spread that much in the pan, so you kind of have to spread it about yourself a bit to make a, a flattish, ovalish, roundish shape. And it's warm enough so that there's just a little bit of kind of bubble at the edge as soon as it hits the pan. Right, we've got just enough time to run and get a plate. This is like a pancake making is an Olympic sport. <laughs> got a plate. There we go. Uh, I'm also just going to pop the oven on just to a low heat. So I'm going to put them on the plate, put them into the oven, and then we'll keep going making pancakes. Not pancakes, drop spuns. <laughs> Scotch pancakes were the little round soft pancakes when I was little. And these are very related to that because in, in Scotland and in Ireland and Wales, there were like um, people used to cook on griddles, which were kind of like flat plates over the fire, often on a, on a hook. Um, and that's where you would cook scones originally rather than in the oven. Um, and these are kind of like the children of those original, more dense scones. So this is kind of quite a traditional Scottish dish. All right, let's just check. It's forming a little golden crust underneath. Ooh. Is, it, is the storm over or are we in the eye of the storm? Right, you can also see that this almost looks like a skin's forming on the top of it. And there's a few little like air bubbles popping. I'm always so cavalier about pancakes and then they just get stuck. And now I can't turn, and now I can't turn a pancake. It's gone, it's gone. Now I can't turn a drop's gone. Drop's gone. Drop's gone. There we are, look, oh, that was, I hope you caught that. Yeah, we'll do that. This is kind of like a slightly lovely crust and that's what's gonna make them good for having butter, jam, golden syrup as my family would have it. You don't sort of stack it up so much as have a plateful that you can butter. With, with your massive knife, you can butter with your massive knife. So this amount of batter should make enough sort of pancake... No. Uh, you just call this video, pancakes or drop scones, Jassy can't decide. I think it should make somewhere between 12 and 16 drop scones. Uh, so that's my first batch. Not looking too, too shabby there. You can see why my dad kind of was into making this with his kids. <laughs> we would make a round of it, we'd all get a drop scone. Um, and you know, and we sit there with butter and golden syrup and sort of getting sticky and eating it whilst he was cooking the next one. It's quite a nice thing to do for your kids and quite satisfying. Cooking, a lot of the time, is just waiting to see other people's faces going, oh, that's nice. <laughs> These look lovely. Um, I probably shouldn't eat the entire plate. I should probably put one on like a small plate so it doesn't look like I'm just going to eat like eight drop scones <laughs> all in one go. Uh, let's go and get a small side plate, like a respectable person. So, perfect serve for your drops gone. Butter, definitely butter. Golden syrup or jam? I'm asking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Golden syrup? Jam. Your jam, okay. Well, I'm very happy to eat one of each. <laughs> Just a little drizzle. Okay. Give it a go. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that is yum. It's really short, really rich. It's hearty and warming and delicious. Um, and I'm into it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we'd love you to like, comment and subscribe. And you can find the recipe at ableandcole.co.uk slash recipes. Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, and happy baking. <laughs>